Hey, welcome to the April 2021 monthly studio report. This is the report for the month of April and all the activities that have been going on in Broken Hammer and All is Fair and Dust and Air. I am the uh, founder, CEO, project manager, <laughs> various titles of the company. And one of these days I'm going to get a Broken Hammer hat and t-shirt and everything to go with this. So for now, please stick with me. Uh, for starters, uh, yeah, we had a really big month. Um, patch 2.0 is out. Woo! Day 2 is done. Uh, yeah, it was one of the wildest months we probably had since the crowdfunding campaign. Crowdfunding was... We were trying to get a, some sort of playable demo ready, and it was just like going back and forth, getting art files, getting bug patches. Back. Oh my gosh, it was chaos. This month was very similar. We uh, set a date of the 27th internally. We didn't really announce it until about a few days before that we were going to launch on the 27th, but internally we were working around the 27th. We wanted to make it this month. And so like around the 25th and a few days there, it was constantly nonstop trying to fix things, trying to find solutions to stuff as quick as possible. And it actually turned out better than we kind of hoped. We actually found some major bugs and such that we weren't expecting. Um, as you can read on our report, if you want to read the report versus watch me talk about it, you can. Uh, mostly what we're talking about is, is yeah, we uh, got the config menu going. Unfortunately, there is a little issue with it, with the persistence where you set the setting, it works. But then when the new audio file loads, it kind of resets itself. So you have to kind of load config and reset the volume settings work. That is an issue we've sent over to Michael, and hopefully Michael is going to be able to find a solution for it. If he doesn't, or if he won't have a solution for it, well, we'll just have to figure out something else down the line if we can. Uh, but we are working on that. We're working on trying to get that functionality fully in place. Again, the config menu was not something that we were really thinking that we were going to get in in, in time, and we kind of we shot it over to Michael and he got it done very fast. We're <laughs> just like, oh, well, you, you can get this done. So we'll go ahead and throw that in. Uh, we also added the button effects to the main menu and things like that. If you'll notice when you hover over, you'll have the buttons light up. And there's also sound effects that are tied to each button. Now, uh, the sound effects were still kind of, that was like a last second thing. We kind of had to throw in what we could right then because we were like, oh, let's go ahead and run with this since we have it functional. And so we may change that sound effect later. Uh, we're kind of still kind of doing some looks at some potential audio files we might want to do for that. Uh, but otherwise, the buttons lighting up, that's ex ideally what we kind of wanted from the beginning. We wanted to be able to do that, and we didn't have that f functionality at the time. And then when Michael came along and he just said, oh, yeah, I can do that, <laughs> so he kind of surprised us a lot, and, and we were able to get that in. So look for more of that as we go forward. Uh, we're probably going to be redoing a lot of the buttons in the story. Uh, that'll be something that we're going to be rolling out over the future patches. To redo those buttons so that those actually light up too. So when you hover over them, there's a audio effect and there's a light up thing. But that, we we just could not get it done in time. I mean, that was kind of like, oh, we can do this. Oh, crud, we're like so close to getting this rolled out. So we just had to get what we could in and then roll out the patch. So that is gonna be coming in the future patches. We'll get all those button effects redone. All that is pending on is that the image button selections that we're doing work right. Because before, we actually had everything working great. I mean, everything was like set and then we had some issues that cropped up and we had to get rid of those image buttons. We had to use something else temporary for the time being. So um, we're thinking that the removal of the 3D camera is also going to enable those things to work right. Uh, we're finding a lot of the issues with Dustin and Air were all tied to that camera system, which we used on the Gramps intro and the various Gramps scenes where you have the grandfather and the family that are talking. And really, it's like when it came down to it, it was like, well, wait a minute, are we going to really put the entire project based on like a 3D camera that only exists in certain scenes and are we gonna no we had to okay let's throw out the 3D camera for now and Tyranno is gonna have to fix that later we don't know when the ETA fixes but for now we just said forget the, the uh, camera system we're not gonna run with that stuff right now 
Uh, but very much a big shout out goes to this whole month was basically the efforts of our team members. Uh, Winks, she did ex incredibly good. She was in the middle of a move too, and she was able to come through with some huge art files like right when we needed them, right at the perfect timing. So we're very grateful for her. Uh, Khan, Khan did amazingly. He's kind of building his own portfolio and kind of doing more freelance stuff right now. And we came to him and we said, hey, we got this stuff need to be done. Can you do it? We got to get it done before end of April. And he came through really big on that. He finished a background and he finished a, actually two backgrounds it turned out to be. So that was uh, pretty awesome. And he's also working on a few other things right now. And then, of course, um, Ingrid, she did help going into this month. We were able to get the Yeshin Guard done, part thanks to her, because she actually did get us a uh, updated model, at least at least the basic one. And she's, she was going, so, uh, she was having some real life stuff during the month. She wasn't moving, but there was something else that was going on, and we'll go into it here. But yeah, she's all right, though. It's just, yeah, it was just a hectic month, and that was coming in, and... So she got us that file, which we were able to get to Winx, and Winx was able to get something out in time. So it's like, we were like, yes, thank you, Ingrid. <laughs> and then, of course, it was Michael, programmer. I mean, we set a work order before him and said, hey, we need, the, I mean, this is what we'd like to get done before the patch. He pretty much finished a whole bunch of it within a couple of days to a week, and then the rest of it was just going back and forth and kind of, does this work? Does that work? And... Uh, there's more stuff coming from him uh, in the uh, written report. We talk about it later, but all right now I'll just go over it that we are working on an achievements page. Uh, it may not get done in time for the early access because the thing was is like we can do the achievements. We've tested the functionality. It does work our, in the game itself, but we want to be able to link it with Steam. And so the trick is is taking our achievements, linking them with Steam, and making them connect and. Uh, we got to look into some of the the coding that has to take place and how does it work with the Tyranno Builder Engine game? How does it work with JavaScript? And seeing if we can get all that resolved. And we are trying to reach out to people and say, Hey, I, did you guys do this thing? And you guys make them talk to each other. And we have discovered that uh, some of the functionality that we're probably going to have to code into Tyranno Builder ourselves, it's just it wasn't built like that in the originally. So. Uh, other Tyranno devs have said, yeah, we had to invent this all ourselves because we couldn't, it didn't get the functionality from the devs. So the good news is, is that stuff looks like it is going to be possible. It's just we're going to have to do a little bit of more of research on it and see if we can get that out. Um, other thing is, is that we do have, like, if you played Katawa Shoujo, you know that as you unlock the game, there are things that change on the main title screen. Characters change, character cards, basically a whole bunch of things change as the game unlocks. And we wanted that type of functionality for Dust and Air from the beginning. We didn't know how or when we were going to add it. And Michael did get the basic um, testing functionality of it in, so that stuff is popping up. And it will be tied into how things unlock, so... Uh, it's just a matter of we have to build the assets for it and what how do we want the main title screen to look like with it and that's going to come into a full rework of the title screen because it may not fit too well depending on what we're going to do and we're going to have to meet as a team over the next few months and really kind of discuss that and say okay how do we want these things to slot in how do we want it to look uh, right now it's looking good looking like we have the basic functionality there that we're going to build upon in the months ahead so that's good and so let's go ahead and move on because uh, we do showcase some art files on the text version of this that you can see some of the work. But if you're watching the video version right now, then you are definitely going to see a bit more because I'm going to go and reveal a whole bunch more of what was going on during the month of April. So let's go ahead and let me switch over to it right now. Okay, just a lot of Photoshop elements here. All right, so this is a major character that we actually <laughs> decided to, we are going to add a scene for her in uh, day two. And we actually decided that we went to the team, we said, can we do it, can we do it fast? And we were able to get it done. And if you have followed this de development for some time, you know this is Rusilla. this is one of the twins, um, 
uh, villains. There's two sis two sisters in uh, uh, Kali's arc who are sort of homicidal maniacs or villains and such. And and she is going to make an appearance in uh, in the Cathedral Arc story. We're really excited about getting her at least some sort of scene with her in, and it's it does really put more of an effect on Kali's story. So. This was the original concept art that was done by Faith. This was done probably a couple years ago. We did, She did this, I think, a live drawing on a screen when we were doing a bunch of stuff for the crowdfunding campaign and talking with Muse. So Faith did the initial, and it's it's perfect. It's awesome. I mean, she did an excellent Rusilla, got the personality which we were looking for. Uh, but as again when you do develop things things start to change with time as you develop concepts so what we did for this whole sequence we sh we sent a lot of this work over to uh, Winx and Winx started to build some sketches for us before she did the final and so here's some of the other sketches this was a sketch one and as you notice there is another character in there gee I wonder if that other character appears and who is that I'm sure if you follow the the uh, dev, you'd know who that is. So these are just concept sketches on how we wanted this uh, little scene to go and how it came to play and we actually chose a combination of some of these so I'm not going to tell you which ones because you'll have to see it in game but you can see from the original concept to the actual full color in-game character yeah uh, a little bit more of the creepiness is going to come through later on when we do the model. We're going to make, we're going to push the limits a little bit more. But this is exactly what we're needing for this scene. This is what this is the version of Rusilla that's coming in right now. Uh, again, there is a time jump between the times that the Kali story starts and the this cathedral story begins. So there is some leeway for the character that's going to be cha be changing with time, and more likely the. the original concept is going to be the character that's going to that you're going to be seeing more in after the time jump a little bit more creepier a little bit more unhinged looking but ideally this is what we wanted for day two is to just showcase Rusilla. Rusilla makes an appearance so Winx really came through big on that and she got it done very quickly we we're very ecstatic with her how awesome she did and then Moving forward, the other character was the Yeshin Guard. This had to be finished for day two, and as you can see, this was uh, this was the Ing this was the concept Ingrid sent us. This is what she was able to get done before all sorts of stuff were happening, and then she later updated it with this. And unfortunately, though, we couldn't run with this yet. However, this guy, this character, may appear later. Uh, we are looking at a few potential options because nothing we're going to put to waste. Everything that gets done, we're going to follow it through. And if you notice, the characters that are on the document, you'll see that the gun was added. We changed the uh, armor, we got rid of the blade, we added more of a gun, rifle sort of thing. So it was a big, big update by the time that character got done. So this other character is going to definitely probably end up being someone else later on in the Yeshin arc story. We're just going to have to see where that all goes with time. And lastly, we are working on, um, Winx is working on, this is what I will go into during the month of May. Winx is going to be working on the uh, Fjordlander character. Now the Fjordlander character we are concepting as possibly a mixture of a musketeer with uh, furs. So just pulled this image from the BBC Musketeer series and so there's kind of an idea and then you have your barony character which has lots of heavy fur. So we're looking at potentially a mixture between these two going forward. The baronies are sort of like this royal Eastern European sort of thing going there. So. We're just gonna see if we can play with some stuff. We're not gonna guarantee how it's gonna look yet, but uh, stay tuned. We'll hopefully have an update going into next month. And as well, what we're looking at uh, next month is not too bad on the amount of stuff we're having to do for day three. We got uh, Georgie is gonna be doing um, 
he's coming back on briefly. He, he was busy with a few things after he finished a thug image for us. And then he's coming back on. He's going to be doing a one background and then finishing up two of the character models. Uh, the other character models, we're just looking at expressions and such. We already got the main base expressions done, so there's not going to be a huge amount. It's just getting those expressions done out, and then the other character just needs the shading resolved a little bit, and then we pretty much have the expressions done for that character. So it's not a huge amount going into day three, which is good. I mean, it's, we're kind of catching up and getting things done faster now. Day four is... Uh, Day four should be just an easily like drop in, done, finished. I mean, we're not looking at major uh, content for that. Uh, it's, it's raising the question of whether we're going to release day three and day four in one instead of doing two things, release them as one. So we're talking about that. We're seeing how things are going to come together. Uh, we're putting the launch on those at probably either end of May or June sometime and then going into summer which will finish the rest of the cathedral neutral story and we will leave early access so i think that's about it for this month um it'll be a little bit busy month going into april i'm mean going into may <laughs> busy month going into may so it's gonna be uh it's going to be hectic, but it's going to be good. We're going to get uh, a lot more done, get the rest of this thing done, get it finished, and we'll get the uh, the game out of early access, hopefully by uh, July. We're projecting that depending on how fast things get done, it's be either Ju early July or late July, somewhere in there. We're We're kind of... We're looking at a few things that could potentially hold us back to later July, but we're we're still on track for early July. So just not to get everybody's hopes up, saying, "Oh my gosh, you guys didn't release that when you said you would." No, well, we're still we're still looking at our dev cycle, and of course, things happen. Real life happens, but our aim is definitely summer, one way or another. July, I would. That's my goal is July. Get that get that release done and then we'll get us out of early access and we'll move on to the story arcs so with that said thanks for joining and we'll see you in the skies jenny